Hey, welcome back to the channel. I was recently looking back at some of my older videos and reading the comments, and I noticed that there was one question that came up over and over again. And that was, how do I get modern video onto an old device? We're going to talk about that today, so stay tuned. All right, now I can already hear the YouTube trolls at their keyboards ready to rip me for this one. Why would anybody want to hook up an old TV to anything and watch it nowadays? That's ridiculous. There's no need for that. It's silly. It's crazy. You guys are right, so there's no need to comment below. We don't need to hear about it. There is no good reason to want to watch something on a 5-inch black and white CRT. So you guys are right. Now for the rest of us, myself included, we like to play around with this stuff for fun. Or maybe you have a retro gaming setup and you want to use an old CRT for it, but you want to use maybe a modern computer with emulation on it, and you want to get that onto a period correct piece of equipment. There are tons of reasons why you might want to do that, and it's not as hard as you think. In fact, this Mega Watchman behind me is actually running off of my phone. A lot of the equipment that you need can actually be found at your local Walmart or your local Best Buy. So it's nothing that's too specialized that you can't find. So let's dig in and I'll show you how I do it for my videos. To be clear, in this video we're going to be talking about devices that need an RF signal in order to display what you're wanting to see. So that's going to be a television set that uses channel 3 or channel 4 and let's say your device is HDMI or even composite video and you need to get it into here. That's the thing that I run into the most. So what you need is actually an RF modulator. You need a device that can take a baseband video signal, like composite, and turn it into a channel 3 or 4 output on RF. Now if you have an old VCR sitting around, you've actually got an RF modulator sitting in your closet. Because you have an input for video and audio and an output to your TV. So you can actually use one of these if your signal is available in composite. There is a better way though. And for me, that better way is by using a dedicated RF modulator. With this, you plug your video and your audio into one side and it outputs on the other via RF and you can select channel three or four. These devices are really easy to use. They require a power input and a couple of cables to hook them up. But I've found that if your source is composite video, that is the easiest way to get that signal out to your TV by RF. In fact, this one I found at my local Best Buy for $24, I believe, and I got an open box for $19, so win. But let's say your source is a device that uses USB-C or HDMI, and you want to send it to a device that uses RF. How, how do we get this to work? Well, there's a device for that too. And that device is an HDMI to composite video converter. It takes HDMI video on this end and brings it out as composite video on the other. Now this has a couple of different uses. If you have an HDMI signal that you want to input to a CRT television that has composite video inputs, you could use this and go straight into it. Now in my case, I double it up with the RF modulator in order to get it to the older TVs that do not have video inputs. So in the case of the Mega Watchman here that's playing the videos from my phone, we're actually double converting that video. We're taking it from HD over HDMI, converting that into composite video, and taking that composite video, and then converting that into an RF signal to feed into the back of the TV. Now I know what you're thinking, you don't want to convert anything twice because you're going to lose quality, right? Well, that's true, but we're kind of converting it to lose quality anyway. We're going from HD to composite video and to RF. And even if the RF signal was perfect, it'd be 525 lines of interlaced resolution that wasn't really good to begin with. So in this setup, I'm not really that concerned about losing that quality. Now I know that there are devices that go straight from the 4K or HD video to RF, which still of course output a 525 line NTSC signal, but you kind of lose a little bit of flexibility there. I found that with this setup, having two converters, I can hook up just about any device that I want to just about any monitor or TV that I come across. So it's become a very flexible system for me to use. 
Now, if you have thoughts about it or you have your own system that you like better, be sure to leave that down in the comments. I'd love to read through and see what everybody else is doing. For now, that's all I have. I appreciate you watching, and if you would, please click the subscribe button below. I'm noticing that a lot of people that watch our videos aren't subscribed, and you have no idea how much that really helps out the channel for you to click that little button down there. I'm also going to leave a link above for the video on the Mega Watchman if you haven't seen that one already. So thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on the Vintage Electronics Channel. Well, hi, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to get... I was looking back through some of the old videos and that was the number one question I got. Question. Welcome back to the channel. I was looking back through some... And I noticed that the number one question that keep... That keep... Can I not talk today? Yeah, it is ridiculous, so bear with me. Some of us do it for fun. We enjoy doing this type of f***ing <laughs> Now, I can already hear the YouTube trolls getting ready at their keyboards to f***ing do whatever. So, it's not really hard to do. You might need a little bit of extra equipment, but a lot of it can be found at your local Best Buy or your Walmart. So it's nothing specialized, nothing that can have to can can.